The next uh, program to be discussed is the uh, New York uh, City Child Health Clinics, and uh, Dr. Catherine Loback and Dr. Carmen Ramos uh, Bonon uh, will make the presentation. Thank you. We are offering our, present, our innovation as a live presentation. It will take place in two scenes. Scene one is before the transformation, and scene two is after the transformation. The setting is in a child health clinic of the New York City Department of Health on a Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. Number 12. Who has number 12? <laughs> there you are. Just a minute. Bronx River <laughs> Clinic. Yes, Mommy. The baby's due for shots today. She has a cold. No, no, don't bring her here today. Wait till she's better and then call us. Okay. What's the baby's name? Junior. Last name? Gonzalez. Hello, Bronx River Clinic. He has fever. He's wheezing. Oh, no, you can't bring him here. Take him over to the, to the Bronx Municipal Emergency Room. They're very good at taking care of asthma. Now, mother, go down the hall and tell the nurse you're here. Dr. Bala will see the baby. But I saw Dr. Ming last time. Why can't I see her here today? I'm sorry, but Dr. Ming is seeing another baby, and Dr. Bala is free now, so that's who will see you. Oh, well. <laughs> number 13. Who has number 13? Scene two, after the transformation. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Gonzalez? That's me. Excuse me. Hello, Bronx River Clinic. Yes, Mrs. Green. You say he's wheezing since yesterday? Yes, Dr. Bala is here. I'll transfer your call to her. Dr. Bala, I have Mrs. Green holding on line two. She says Jamal has been wheezing since yesterday. If you need to see her, we can fit her in at 11. OK. Now, Mrs. Gonzalez, you have an appointment with Dr. Ming at 930. Thank you for coming on time. I'm not sure I should have come here today. Junior has a bit of a cold. Oh, that's all right. Dr. Ming will check him and decide whether it's all right for him to get his shots. Just take him down the hall, and I'll tell Nurse Jones you're here. Well, that's a relief. Now, maybe Junior's shots won't have to be postponed again. End of skit. <laughs> What's happened to families in this clinic, that is, being assigned to their own doctor, having that doctor available to care for illness, and especially asthma, and being able to see the doctor at a specific appointment time, has happened in all 45 New York City child health clinics in all five boroughs. And besides my baby, over 90,000 children benefit from having their own pediatric primary care physician to coordinate their care and to follow up on their problems. In this era of health care reform, the need will be greater than ever for the kind of capacity for primary care in the inner city that our clinics provide. And we are there to meet the challenge. Whether it's managed care, health alliances, or even single payer, we will be there. We will be there for those families, for the underserved, the immigrants who have nowhere else to turn. Our mission hasn't changed. We just have learned to do it better. Thank you. Thank you for the presentations. Are there questions from, yes, Harriet? Uh, well, I loved the, the change. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, do you find uh, in, uh, the, that by as wonderful as it is to have this more accessible and complete child care that it still is separated somehow from the rest of the family, you know, I mean, the more, uh, because there may be other children with other kinds of things or the parents or, you know, in other words, you're, you're still not dealing with the unit, family unit. Well, that's partially true. Although we had a baby here, our clinics actually see children to the age of 12. So we do try to and take all the children in a family and assign them to the pediatrician. Uh, you're right, though, that we aren't providing services to the adults in the family or the adolescents. 
We would like to do that, and in truth, about five of our larger clinics are in the process of renovation uh, in an outgrowth of our innovation called the Mayor's Communicare Program in New York City. And those clinics have the space and the size as the renovations are completed that there will be full family services. Many of our clinics in the, smaller, in the system are smaller. They're located in housing projects in a three or four room um, uh, space. And it probably would not be possible for those to be transformed to family care. Uh, the, the issue here, of course, is having the, the family history in sort of a one stop yes, shop yes. for the family that, that you've got one step on the way. <laughs> That's my concern. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Hubert and then Max. You've done a lot with asthma. Can you tell us the full scope of services that are actually being provided today? And also, could you give us a, a clear idea about the number of individuals that have actually been serviced? The, you mean beyond asthma? Because we're very, very proud of our asthma yeah, program. Beyond which, well, uh, well, well, both. Yeah. The asthma is the single largest medical problem children have in New York City and elsewhere. It fills the emergency rooms. It fills the hospital beds. And we've gone into a partnership with our academic uh, sister to the north, Columbia Presbyterian, and have trained all the 70 pediatricians in our system to be up to state-of-the-art management of asthma so that the children are identified by the receptionist and are referred uh, to their doctor in our clinic uh, who trains and, and the nurses also teach and train the mothers and families how to take care of asthma. So we think this is a, a major piece of it. The overall scope is that we do full preventive care, all of the um, recommended uh, preventive services, and all of the sick care within our capacity. We have fully trained pediatricians. All are either board certified or board trained so that they, any, any kind of illness or problem the child has, they should be capable of taking care of right up to needing a, a specialist for it. So it's, it's full service, and you, you've done not just asthma, but you're doing everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, whether it's an infection or, or a skin problem or a gastrointestinal, whatever it might be. Uh, Antonia, and then Max. Um, what plans do you have to sort of uh, equalize uh, the appearance of the facilities? It seems to play such a strong, be such a strong factor, and some of them are not as up to par as the others. The parents, n n the, the facilities. Oh, the appearance. I'm the sorry. Appearance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before I, there was one other part of the other question I didn't answer, which was the total number of children we've been serving. Uh, we have uh, between 90 and 100,000 children registered in these clinics for full primary care throughout New York City. And that, these are, this is not a new system, of course. This, this system was started early in this century and has grown over many, many years. Uh, the appearance of the clinics has been a serious problem. We developed a rating system about five years ago, which rated them on um, repair, size, layout, and so forth, and have um, received capital funding from the New York City capital budget for renovating 12 of the 45 clinics. We are hopeful that, and that's a long process under city government, but we are hopeful that over the next decade we'll have almost all of them eventually renovated. Max? Could you maybe explain the jurisdictional situation in the city of New York, uh, the department and where it might go and what its future is? That is a very uh, complicated question. <laughs> uh, the Department of Health is uh, a traditional health department that offers primarily categorical programs beyond all of its other public health responsibilities. The giant, mega giant Health and Hospital Corporation provides most of the publicly funded health care in New York City, both in hospitals and in the community as well. Uh, there is at this time, uh, an effort to, uh, or a plan to uh, have these child health clinics transferred out of the health department <coughs> into the Health and Hospital Corporation. We are very concerned because we feel we'll be swallowed up in a giant program uh, that has a great many of its own problems at this time, both fiscal and uh, leadership uh, instability management. So we are hoping that we will either be allowed to stay in the health department or find some alternative way of operating this rather large child health